Good morning. Welcome to the Mid Bible Class. I'd like to thank the radio station for this a lot of time, but most importantly, I want to thank God for coming together this morning to pray in the Lord's Temple. Dear Lord, would you lead us in the word of prayer, please? Let us pray. Father, we indeed come this morning grateful and thankful, Lord, for Jesus Christ in our lives. And thankful, Lord, for another opportunity to spend a Sunday morning in worship and praise in your name. Come this morning, Lord, lifting up all that transpires here at the Men's Bible class, Lord, and throughout the day, Lord, and, and uh, those that, that are be testifying on your behalf this morning, churches, Lord, all across the land and across the world, Lord, we lift it up. We ask you, Lord, to pour out your spirit and bless us, Lord, with your presence in a manifest way. Grant it, Lord, that today uh, your kingdom be increased, Lord, here in our midst. And Lord, we love so much. Pray your blessing over it. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you, Daryl. I appreciate those prayers. Uh, I hope everybody's having a wonderful morning this morning here in Johnson, Texas. A little bit cold, but that's okay. You know, someone said it would be maybe about 60 degrees today, so it will be pretty cool. What's that old saying in, uh, what's that old saying in, in, uh, in Texas? If you don't like the weather, hang around for about an hour and things will probably change. Uh, Lewis just walked in and gave me a gave me a little advertisement, a little note to read out. Tonight there's a Christmas for Asylum. It's benefiting the House of Faith. It'll be today at 3 o'clock at the Junction First United Methodist Church uh, with uh, Meredith Allen and Speaker Savage. Savage will be in charge of that. And House of Faith is a pretty neat deal. They have it here at the Rotary House, the Girl Scout House, on every Wednesday. Adults get together and then they have young children here where they watch over them for a couple hours in between that school time out and, and parents getting off work and they, they do get together, they do have games and they do play, it is structured, but most importantly they also while they're here they're teaching the Word of God. And it's a really neat deal if you show up at 3 o'clock and, and uh, be there for the program break. If not, just probably speak on and you give a donation to help out see what's going on. Um, Christmas coming up. Wow. Pretty neat. Year. The birth of Jesus Christ is what we celebrate. There's a song going out right now that I heard the other day. Jay sent it to me. It's a word that the young man was in the mall, the basis of the story, and all these line of kids were flying out to see and Backed up, everybody was in the store, buying presents. What are you going to give me? What are you going to give me? One little boy walked in, was with his parents, and basically said, But well, where's the line for Jesus? Season for the reason. You know, we all do get together and we do celebrate. And that's cool. It is a time for families. But we need to truly remember the time and the reason for celebration. Hence the birth of the Lord Jesus Christ. I was uh, going over a little sensual lesson and again listened to Billy Graham last night as I normally do on Saturday nights and got some pretty good notes on some areas I wanted to talk a little bit today before Jerry speaks. And um, part of it was in the story of the book of Luke, second chapter, and it dealt with the birth of Jesus. But it started out by saying that the, the shepherds were in the field watching their flocks, and they were visited by angels of the glory of God, and they were told of the birth and the coming of Jesus Christ. This is in Luke 2. And at that time, they were they, they had fear upon them because imagine an angel showing up and the glory of God being there and having the whole scene. You got at one point be a like, what's going on here? But the angel reassured them of what was going on. This is the birth of the Messiah. This is the birth of the, the Anointed One. He, he's come to bring peace to the earth. So they they, they they felt better about that. But the point I'm getting at is what has happened after they. They heard of the, the birth of Jesus Christ. They rushed off to see Jesus in the manger. And after they saw Jesus, the most, one of the most important things they did, they ran out to the world and to people they knew and spread the good news. And that was pretty cool. Throughout the Bible, I've talked in several instances of men and women who've come face to face with Jesus. And after understanding who he is and being blessed by Jesus, they go 
out and spread the good news to people. You know, Paul, I mean, Peter and John once, once talked about how, how can we not talk of what we've seen? Billy Graham was talking last night in one of his places, he's in Colorado last night, he was talking, I guess it was a three or four day, three or four day conference. And one day he was in his uh, hotel and a lady approached him and he said, you know, she said, I was there last night. And when he had the altar call, it came forward. And afterwards, I went out and I got home and picked up a phone call of 22 people. And she said, you know what? None of them gave me a hard time. And actually, that one of the 22 people, six people have committed to come with me tonight to hear you again. These are people who have come face to face who have felt the Holy Spirit in their minds come forth and touch their hearts. And they can't, can't wait to spread the good news. Is that what we do? There is a little fear about accepting Jesus Christ and kind of running against the tide a little bit and running out to what? But if I share with somebody, what are they going to say? But as Peter and John said, how can we not talk about it? How can we not talk about somebody who's touched our lives in such a way that we know it's going to be all good? How can I not want to share that with somebody? How can I just go into a closet and keep that for myself? Think about that as we come upon the Christmas spirit. Everybody's getting ready to open presents. Think about what's truly in your heart. And ask, where is the life for Jesus? What are we truly celebrating here? And don't you just want to run out there and just start screaming, Jesus, I love you. There's a verse here I had marked from, I think it's in 2 Corinthians, see if I put my glasses on here. 2 Corinthians 9, 15, verse says, Thanks be to God for his indescribable gift. It is indescribable what he's done for us. What Jesus Christ has done for us, we can't put in words. But we need to try. We need to be able to go out there and tell people what Jesus has done for me and what he'll do for you. Something back like that. All right, I'm sure Jerry's got something he wants to talk about today, so I'll get out of the way. It's going to be a warning, 
but it's also going to be blessing. Okay, and I'm going to use Israel to start off. They're going to be our first example. They were a nation full of people who were brought up in the nurture and admonition of the Lord. But they had, had got to this place where they had provoked their father to wrath. The Lord was sick of their bad behavior. It was enough. And it, they were being disciplined. But there was one of God's children. He got it. He understood why they were getting disciplined. Okay? And I want you to know his reaction and his confession. Okay? This is what he said. He said, you welcome those who gladly do good. To follow godly ways. But you have been very angry with us, for we are not godly. We are constant sinners. How can people like us be saved? We are all infected and impure with sin. When we display our righteous deeds, they are nothing but filthy rags. Like autumn leaves, we wither and fall, and our sins sweep us away like the wind. Yet no one calls on your name or pleads with you for your mercy. Therefore, you have turned away from us and turned us over to our sins. And yet, O oh Lord, you are our Father. We are the clay, and you are the potter. We are all formed by your hand. Don't be so angry with us, Lord. Please don't remember our sins forever. Look at us, we pray, and see that we are all your people. You see, that was from Isaiah 64, 5 through 9. Isaiah recognized that the Lord was his only hope. Though the whole rest of the world might not care about Israel, their Father in heaven loved them. And they knew it. He had invested himself to the point that he gave them his name. He made, it, he made them promises, and he alone was able to keep those promises. King David wrote this because he realized that his Lord was a good, and gracious, and a faithful Father. He said, Though I am surrounded by troubles, you will protect me from the anger of my enemies. You reach out your hand, and the power of your right hand saves me. The Lord will work out his plans for my life. For your faithful love, O Lord, endures forever. Don't abandon me, for you made me. Okay? That's Psalm 138, 7 and 8. Like the Israelites, we too have become children of God through that gift of Jesus Christ that Job was telling me about earlier. And our faith in him. Just like the nation of Israel, we, as the church of the body of Christ, we've also been raised in God's love. And just like Israel, we've also been rebellious. We're like teenagers. We've got to this place where we think we've got a pretty good understanding on things. And we've gotten sloppy. And we might have a false sense of security. Okay? There is a coming judgment, everybody. We've got to remember that. It's coming. So what kind of child would you say that you are in the eyes of God, your Father? Are you the kind of child that realizes that your behavior has upset Daddy and he's about to whoop your butt? Okay? <laughs> or are you the kind of child who thinks if you just keep pushing and pushing and maybe you're going to get Daddy to give in and he's going to let you have your way? Okay, I'm going to go on to something else for a second. Light it up. I know this is Christmas. I know <laughs> 